Thank you very much, Vilad. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Sameh Bouhilben. I'm a vice president of research at Del Oro Group. Uh, Del Oro is a market research firm focusing mainly on IT and networking industries. And I track data center switching and AI networks at Del Oro. I'm very happy to be here today to provide an update on the AI networking market. As you know, last year was the first time we all had that aha moment when we realized the massive market opportunities that AI workloads may generate. And it was here last year to provide our initial view and initial thoughts on the market. Today, I'm going to provide an update on how things may have evolved over the last few months. But before I get started, out of curiosity, who was able to attend this session last year? Who attended my? Oh, great, some loyal audience, fantastic. So uh, let me get started. Uh, I always want to first revisit the definition and the scope of what we call AI backend networks. It may be obvious to some of you, it may not be to many others as far as my experience. So I want just to get it out of the way. What is AI backend network? So on this chart, what you look at the top, it's really the traditional front end network connecting general purpose servers. It's all Ethernet, and the market for data center switches deployed in the front end network is roughly 20 billion today, growing at high single digit giger over the next four to five years. Still healthy market. But what's more exciting is the back end network, which is what we look at uh, at the bottom, which connects the accelerated servers. It's a mix of Anthony Band and Ethernet. That's a big topic in the market. I'm not going to have the time to discuss it today. Last year, I didn't have the time to discuss it either, but I'm happy to take uh, questions after the, after the presentation. Uh, it's called the AI backend network, and I will talk about the market sizing for that in future slides. Now, there are different network design options uh, for AI clusters. Again, this may be obvious to some of you. It may not be obvious to some others. So I wanted to revisit this. Um, depending on the number of GPUs in your cluster, you th that dictates what type of network you need to build and how you connect the different GPUs. If your AI cluster has uh, tens or maybe a few hundreds of GPUs, you can use a scale-up connectivity option to build what we call a compute fabric and uh, connect all these GPU or accelerators together in one single GPU domain. But if you have thousands or tens of thousands of GPUs, you definitely need what we call a scale-out network to connect these accelerators across multiple racks and in many cases across multiple data centers. And if you look at the largest AI clusters built by the hyperscalers today, a number of them are already pushing 100,000 GPU already. And so we expect that some of these AI clusters will be requiring up to 1 million accelerators not in the so distant future. So what that means, it means that AI clusters are becoming highly distributed, which raises the importance of the network. In other words, the network is becoming effectively the computer for these AI clusters. And how you build, how you operate your AI uh, uh, network will definitely dictate the performance of your AI applications. Now, how big is this market? That's really the meat of this uh, uh, presentation. So I remember when I first published our initial AI network forecast about a year ago. Many of my clients told me, there is no way, that's too high. And I told them, you know, if I'm wrong, I most likely be on the low side, not on the high side. And for those of you who attended this session last year, you may recall one of my quotes. I said that AI backend networks are expected to crush all market expectations, including mine. And sure enough, when I published our last July forecast, I had to raise the market outlook by 30%. Currently, we're predicting that AI backend networks, and this is just the scale out portion, not adding the scaling up, uh, is projected to surpass well over 20 billion 
by 2028. That's as big as the front end network today. So in other words, AI networks have the potential to double the total addressable market for data center switching. Now, um, as you know, AI networks have many requirements that are different from traditional front-end networks. And last year, I talked about scalability, lostiness, low tail latency. This year, I'm going to focus more on speeds because I have later on uh, optics discussion. So speeds are more relevant here. And so, as you know, unlike front-end networks, which, which are usually compute-bound, the bottleneck in the AI network is really the network. Because AI clusters are highly, you know, very expensive, you, ne you need to make sure that your network is running at nearly 100%. On top of that, the refresh cycle in AI backend networks is dictated by the accelerators, and they are usually at a cadence of 18 to 24 months, whereas in the front-end network, we're seeing refresh cycles getting elongated. Now we're talking about four to five years. That's why the speed upgrade cycles in back-end networks are twice as fast as in the front-end networks. If you look at this chart, you can see that by 2025, we predict that the majority of ports in AI back-end networks will be 800 gig. By 2028, majority of ports will be 1600 gig and even 3200 gig, which I'm not bringing up uh, out in, in this uh, chart. If you look at the front end network, 800 gig will barely start shipping in 2025. So clearly we have very distinct uh, uh, speed upgrade cycles in both networks. Looking at ports, we predict over 200 million of 800 gig and 1600 gig switch ports will be shipping in AI backend networks over the next four to five years. Much higher than what we predict for front end. On top of that, half of those ports will be 1600 gig and 3200 gig. 1600 gig doesn't even show up when you look at the front end networks. On top of that, because AI clusters, as I mentioned, are, are highly distributed, a big portion of those ports will end up with optics. In conclusion, AI clusters drive more optics and higher rates than front-end networks, which raises a big challenge, power consumption. Number of optics exploding, power consumption rising with higher speeds, that means that optics power consumption becoming increasingly critical, and we really need to address this issue as soon as possible. There are a number of options in the market. Villar just mentioned uh, co-package, near drive, half your time. I also do believe, Villar, that things, they will coexist. And I'm not gonna talk about the pros and cons of each one of them. I will leave that uh, for the next speakers. But it will be very interesting to watch what hyperscalers will be picking over the next uh, few years. Now, I want to leave you with a few thoughts here. Clearly, we are at the very early stages of a multi-year AI journey. And although we started to hear some concerns about a potential slowdown in AI investments, to be honest with you, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Uh, in fact, we're seeing the opposite. AI investments are continuing to accelerate. And I wanted here to show you a few popular quotes from Meta and Google. You may recall uh, on Meta's latest earnings call, Mark said that at this point, I would rather risk building capacity before it's, too, it's needed rather than too late. Uh, Google CEO said that in tech, when you are going through transitions like this, the risk of underinvesting is dramatically higher than overinvesting. <coughs> Unfortunately, challenges in scaling out the clusters will continue to intensify, and we believe that hyperscalers will uh, take uh, distinct approaches. What's also interesting is that up till now, We've been observing that the market was in a panic mode. Hyperscalers have been building AI clusters as fast as they can, but not necessarily in the most efficient way. But that's changing. 
we're clearly seeing, and you've seen this throughout this conference already, we're, clean, we're clearly seeing a shift in focus towards more efficiency because definitely and clearly efficiency will drive long-term profitability and sustainability. And that's going to be the main focus over the next few years. We will see a change in strategies, we will see change in technologies, uh, and that's going to be very exciting. So I will leave it here. Hopefully I'm at my 10 minute mark, uh, Vilad. <laughs> And uh, happy to take questions if, if time permits. Thank you, Samay. <clears throat> Any questions from the audience? There is one question over there. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, no, I can. Thanks so no. much for the presentation. I have a question relative to uh, 1.6 in the back end network. Is it literally 1.6 or is it the 224 electrical lanes that are going to be needed at that time? So it will be based on two, uh, 200 gig uh, electrical lane for sure. So uh, it's a, a number of lanes of 200 gig, uh, but we are not talking about spanning out or spitting out ports in backend network. A true port will be usually used and maximized at its 100% uh, capacity, yes. Yeah, that was my expectation, but thanks for confirming that. Thanks so Absolutely. much. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Samay. I just have a comment on your presentation. I think those statements indicates that we are officially in the bubble territory. <laughs> I would argue that. Uh, yes, we may be in a bubble, but I don't think that, uh, I think it's going to be a few years before we hit really the bubble. Before we crash. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> uh, and here's why. If you ask any of the hyperscalers, uh, they, had, they had some bad experiences under forecasting their capacity. And that's because they were not able to project the trajectory of the growth of the AI clusters. Now, if you look at their projections today, their, the AI clusters in terms of size, in terms of number of parameters, is doing like this. When you start seeing something like this, then when you start to worry. Right. Now, I'm not worried for the next four to five years. All right. Relax, everybody. <laughs> Relax for five years. <laughs> we talk after that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So our next speaker is, is representing. <laughs> yes. Thank you.